Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Serious games might sound like a contradiction in terms, but in fact, video and computer games are increasingly being adopted for the classroom. The idea is to make learning more interactive and engaging. So how does it work and what do students think of the idea? We explore gaming this week on Learning World. The phrase serious games originally referred to things like cards and board games, but now it increasingly means computer games with an educational slant. But can gaming really be educational? Can it really compete with commercial games for young people's attention? We asked some experts at the MIT Game Lab. At the MIT in Boston, one of the world's most prestigious and advanced universities when it comes to technology, the day starts with a roll of the dice or a hand of cards. The Game Lab is where professors and students are developing new serious games. Certain types of education, the old using textbooks and that sort of thing, are being uh, sort of shoved aside by new interactive mediums. And I think that games uh, really have an incredible potential to gather people's interest about topics in something that they might not otherwise enjoy. Zach helped develop a slower speed of light, a video game which explains the theory of relativity by enabling gamers to experience it. It's very hard to intuitively understand how the world would change while traveling at the speed of light. And so the game does a good job of letting us see what that might look like. The term serious games was first coined in the US in 1970. But with the advent of IT, the possibilities are constantly evolving. I think a lot of the people developing serious games today see, oh look, there are millions and millions of people out there that love video games. And if we can just capture that audience by developing a game with serious content, then we can, we can help people learn. And I think that's kind of backwards. You, have to, you need to know why, why are you using a game on this topic. And that is really tricky because it means you have to understand that you have to organize the knowledge in a new way. You cannot just put it onto a game um, or the other way around. You, know, you, you pretty much have a fun game and you just put a little knowledge in there. Constantine and Steven are working on a game called Movers and Shakers, which is designed to teach gamers about business ethics. They agree that the challenge is making serious games as attractive as commercial ones. We cannot excuse terribly designed serious games anymore. Every boring serious game destroys um, you know, the potential because kids and teenagers or you know, whoever uses that game, the moment they decide that they don't like education games anymore, we have lost. There is a need for professional artwork and real content. But I think we're still learning how people, how people learn from games at some level, because it's, it's not the same way as you learn when you sit and you listen to a lecture or when you read a book. I don't think we're going to see education become nothing but playing digital games. But I don't think you can do education with just one method. Many countries have not only started using computer games in the classroom, but are also encouraging students to build their own games, even at a very young age. In Scotland, the Consolarium is a state-funded centre that aims to encourage educational gaming and game designing. We visited one school to find out more. Scotland has its own educational system, which is separate and in many ways different to the educational system in the rest of the UK. The Consolarium is one example. It was set up in 2006 to develop educational games. At this primary school near Edinburgh, these six-year-olds are learning all kinds of skills while playing games in the classroom. Today we're doing a lot of literacy work. So when they're using the Nintendo consoles today, they're doing reading with them. So they're wanting to find an egg, help it to hatch, and then look after it so that the creature can grow, which transfers to real-life nurturing skills. 
um, which are applicable for looking after pets or for looking after young children at home. And quite a few of the children in the class have got new babies at home, which is also nice for them because they're able to know when to look after the babies, what the babies need. So what are the children learning? How to um, look after the big mushrooms, but if you don't um, um, take care of them, they'll go away. Trying to feed some um, babies. When it began, many people were sceptical about the concept of learning through play. But over the years, they've admitted that the idea works. We have built up a bank of equipment that can be used in schools. So what we do is we have a national internet in Scotland called Glow. And every teacher and every pupil is linked up to this. And what I have, I have a community, a professional community in Glow, that teachers can join. And if they join, they can access our Get Game Gear Here section. And so if they join the community and access that section, they can have a look to see what's available and when. And we have four loan periods in a year. Gaming doesn't teach just soft skills, but it teaches children the three R's too. I think that six is a good age to start doing something like this in school because they've had a good grounding of their numeracy and literacy skills. So th six is the minimum age I think that would be appropriate to introduce something like the DS into the classroom. The Consolarium also encourages children to create and not just consume video games. Learning from playing computer games isn't only for school children. In this next report from Germany, we look at how lots of different people can benefit from games, including preschoolers, people with special needs and even adult professionals. Here in Germany, just outside Berlin, this supermarket uses a game called Virtual Supermarket as part of their staff training program. In the game, it's possible to work your way right to the top and become a manager. These days, customers are increasingly demanding and there are always new products in the shop, so we need to widen our knowledge in all areas. The game reflects the real world, and players have to answer questions asked by shoppers like, how can you tell a pineapple is ripe? The idea is to prepare assistance for the shop floor. And by the way, the answer is smelling a pineapple tells you if it's ripe. Gaming motivates staff to learn. It's a real incentive. People can develop and have a virtual career path during the game. They enjoy playing it and get involved with it. And of course it's fun. It makes learning fun. Here in Germany, serious games are also being used in the classroom. This software package features two mice who help primary school kids learn German syntax and grammar in a fun, engaging way. This is important, as German teachers often complain that children arrive in school lacking even basic language skills. We've tried to combine two different worlds. There's the kids' world of computer games and software they know. On the other hand, there's our educational approach. What do they need in order to learn German correctly? We looked at things like phonology, syntax and vocabulary. Then we connected these two things. As children win, they move up to the next level. And it works so well that over 8,000 kindergartens in Germany, even those for special needs children, are already using the game. When we first started using the tablet in the classroom, we did have some queries from parents. They were concerned about how we would use it and how often the kids would have access to it. Since then, though, it's become widely accepted. The parents even have their own logins and passwords, and some of them even use it at home. So it seems everyone is playing serious games these days. And what about you? 
why not share your experiences on our social media pages? Well, that's it from the Learning World team. Goodbye. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.